Hello there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Dodgy Gamer here, back with another extra episode, episode 40 of Andorra Andorra, the double challenge, where I take charge of the club FC Andorra and the nation, the national team of Andorra, and try to lead them both along the road to glory. But we've come a bit stuck. We got a bit stuck. The wheels are falling off after that transfer saga. Last time, we've got fallout. Lee Russell, star striker, the Rochdale when the kid is unhappy. I signed him to a new contract way back in January. He wanted me to strengthen the squad. Now, here's the annoying thing. During the summer, as we were going through the pre-season and the transfer window, checking on that promises tab, it said he was happy. He was happy that we'd improved the squad when a couple of those early signings came in. He was happy. He then became unhappy at the last minute because of the sales of Vukotic and Miller. Okay, the Miller sale ultimately is on me, but the Vukotic one is not on me. Harwood Bellis is not on me. And all these combined to make Russell feel that the squad is weaker than it was. Then we got the same with Guedes, our Portuguese midfielder. He wanted the squad to be strengthened. He feels that we haven't done that. Same kind of thing. In both cases, I discussed it with them. There wasn't the option to choose that really reflected the situation. Like, I should, if the board's gone over my head for the sale of two key players, I should have the option to say in these conversations, well, the bloody board sold the players and weakened the squad. What can I do about that? But I didn't have that option. I just said, you know, shut up and get on with it. Or I had the option to say, oh, please, how can I make it up to you? Or I have the option to say, OK, then you can leave. So I went with, I've went with, first of all, what can we do to sort this out? And then I went with just shut up and get on with your job. Now here's a bizarre thing. This must be a bit of a bug, perhaps. But you would think then team meeting is going to be called. They want to say they're unhappy with my treatment of the players. That did happen. But look, the squad wanted to discuss my treatment of Liam Miller. And the issue is that they feel I should let him leave the club. And um, he left the club already? In some better news, I personally picked up an accolade for um, the first time in this division, I think, Manager of the Month for the month of August, thanks to our seven points and our positive start. And then the bloody chairman comes in all like, Oh, you got Manager of the Month. I'm so happy. It's so great for our reputation. Well, screw you. I forgot to mention last episode, our youngster, our pick of last season's youth intake side, Muyemba, is out on loan at the moment. He's gone to Intercity. Interesting. Uh, why? I don't know why there's a Spanish football team named after a British rail service. Anyway, he made his league debut for them. They got thrashed, but he still put in a good performance, so that's a good sign, isn't it? So, we've got the live com. I did say, I mentioned last time during the episode that we would have Albacete as a live com, and then we ran out of time. So, I'm bringing you, my dear viewers, this extra episode to bring you that match. So, I hope you appreciate it. And you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. So, most of the teams around us have played already. You'll see from the table over here. But, um, Gijon and Zaragoza dropped points, just picked up draws. Bloody Deportiva La Coruña, the thieves of Vukatic, are top. We've got to knock them off that spot. As you can tell, I'm quite annoyed about all the transfer business, mainly because I was actually thinking, you know, I'm not going to hold on to those players forever, but I was thinking these are players where we can get, you know, several million pounds for them, big release clauses, um, or sell-on clauses. I got the sell-on clause in there for Millar, but nothing really of note for Vukatic. It wasn't worth it, in my opinion. Anyway, this is how we line up today. Um, Biancone and Hodzic are in the team from some of the new signings. Not making their debuts, of course, they've already played. And we've got Rico making his debut. Uh, Fofana's on the bench. He's apparently just recovering from a knock, so it's been recommended that I don't give him a full match at this point. Guedes and Crush are both going to sulk on the bench for now. Um, we've got Navarro back in it and uh, Bernua coming back in after their spells on loan last season. I was in two minds about putting Russell in the team as he's sulking as well, but, you know, he is a, just a standout striker, better than Navarro. Benedetti was injured all through the summer, hasn't had a pre-season, so he's still not really fit. Pick up where you left off last time out. 
and I've got faith in the rest of you, so at least we've got a positive reaction there. So the media did ask me in the tunnel interview about Benedetti. Whoa, whoa, Benedetti, bow to bow, what's going on, they said. I said, you know, he's you know, he's just recovered from his injury. We'll give him a bit more time rather than risk him immediately in a game like this. Anyway, we've got our first highlight, and it's Albacete in an advanced position. We've pushed them back a bit, but they've still got the chance to create something here. They're in a dangerous position in the box, and they've taken the lead. Is this where the dynamics come back to bite us? I think last season we just flew so high because the dynamics in the squad were so strong. Everything was up in the, right near the end of the green bars, and all the players were happy. There were a couple of minor bits of unhappiness that were easily resolved. And we got to the point where, you know, there were never any poor performances in training. Everybody was giving their all every single match. And now we've got the squad with unhappy players. We've had players who've left. A lot of upheaval. Oh, dearie me. Hmm, that's it. For highlights, um, so team talk is quite obviously going to... I'm going to go with aggressive, actually. Show me something else in the second half. I'm going to tell Russell that he's just not playing well. Not happy with your performance. That's motivated him. Um, Justiniano's been okay, I suppose. The players look ready to walk through walls. I'd rather you just scored a goal, to be honest. If you look at the stats, Andorra have dominated. They just didn't deem any of those shots worthy of showing us. Anyway, we've got a chance here, but it's intercepted by Albacete, and they've just switched flanks again, but no pole ball there. Rico, Macias up to Russell. What's Russell going to do? Is he going to score? No, well, gets saved by the keeper. Mm, I don't know, question mark over Russell there. Was his heart really in trying to put that into the back of the net? Who knows? Perez's corner goes to absolutely nobody. Okay, another corner. Perez this time gets... It comes to Rico. Rico back to Perez. Perez with the chance to play one in, but again, he just misplaces it. Hodzic now is chasing, tracking back, trying to stop the counter-attack, and he does it with a beautiful sliding tackle, but Albacete immediately get the ball back. They've pulled us out of position a bit there. Is he going to shoot? Yes, he is. Whew, Banu saves it. But now we've got a throw-in. Cisse has come up to take it. What's he going to do here? He throws it in. Russell's got it. Russell. Russell brings it into the box. He shoots. He scores. Hmm. Okay. Um. Fine. That's his job. He's supposed to score goals. He's scored a goal in the team that isn't good enough for him, apparently. Okay, another chance here. Again, Sisse with the throw-in. He's bringing it inside now. Is he going to shoot? Is he going to pass? He passes to Russell. Russell to Elvez. Elvez Balde with his first goal for the club gives us the lead to one. Beautiful play by Sisse bringing that in. Good vision to spot Russell. Russell did all right, and Elvez gets the goal. Right then, a corner here for Albacete. Munoz with an interesting <laughs> clearance. There's nobody out there in an Andorra shirt to pick it up, though. But terrible misplaced ball. Macias and Russell, what the hell were they doing with that back and forth there? Anyway, Perez has got it, brings it into the box. He needs to release it. Gets blocked, but we've still got the ball. We've still got a chance to build something here right from the back. Banus. Okay, good. We didn't lose the ball. It went to Macias. Macias to Perez. Perez knocks it on to Russell. Russell scores another goal. Not bad. It's 3-1. I did notice with Russell, once we had our little spat, um, Manchester United, Chelsea, Arsenal all appeared on the transfer page again as being interested in him. Okay, I'm going to bring Navarro on, get, get his match legs back. We're going to bring on as well... For Fana, for Perez, let's get him on for his debut. And Bernard will bring him on as well. All three substitutions made. I don't see Albacete coming back into this. Having said that, they get highlight now. I could be made to eat my words, but we deal with it. No, we don't. The shot goes in. Banu's dives very late, but okay, five minutes to go. Uh, here we go, another throw in. We've done well from these kind of positions. It comes to Macias, to Munoz. Comes out wide, Navarro, what's he going to do now? Well, his cross gets blocked, but we've still got the ball. It's still here with Munoz. Munoz with a bizarre goal. 
Um, I think that's going to go down as an own goal. Yeah, indeed it is for the keeper. Unlucky there. We'll have another look at that on the replay. I think there that probably hit the post and then hit the keeper again. But we see good vision by Biancone. He knew where Munoz was, yes. Hits the post, hits the keeper's arm, 4-1. And that's how it finishes. A pretty convincing win in the end. Looked like in the first half that we weren't quite there, but a few harsh words, that aggressive team talk definitely did the trick. So you've done brilliantly to come back and win that. End team talk. Let's get out of here. Well, they say Russell sends Andorra top, but you know, Elvis Balde got his first goal for the club, and you know, other people had, you know, Perez had a good game as well. Now, Banners, what a standout guy our goalkeeper Banners is, heaping praise upon his manager for turning everything around. My words at half time. Balde reveals the fury, the fury that brought the victory press conference question. I knew you'd come. They're of course asking me why I substituted Lee Russell when he was on a hat-trick, raising some eyebrows. Well, um, I don't know. Hat-tricks, is that really important? He'd won man of the match anyway. We've got more important fixtures coming up. Uh, he should be happy we won. And just to wrap things up, the Chelsea boss was spotted in the stands, admiring Lee Russell from afar. Mm, only minor interest from Chelsea and Man United at this point. I mean, if they want to offer us some decent money, you know, and then we'll use that to buy better players. So yes, internationals coming up, and then we're, we're going to blast through a lot of this first half of the season, I think. We'll see if we get an interesting draw in the cup, maybe. Next episode will definitely be internationals, the end of the Euro 2024 qualifying campaign. We'll see if we get anything, anyone interested in the cup for FC Andorra. We'll see what the January transfer window's like, but we're, we're going to focus our energies this season on the latter part of the season and hopefully a promotion push. What do you think? Is that realistic? Let me know down in the comments below. But for now, thank you very much for watching and joining me today. I do appreciate you taking the time to watch my little videos. Please hit that like button if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm Dodgy Gamer. See you again soon.